My name is Dr. Susan Nelson. I'm a clinician in the Pet Health Center, and that's our area general medicine for dogs and cats. So a big topic in veterinary medicine now is zoonotic diseases, and what that means are these are diseases that transmit back and forth between people and animals, and particularly we'll talk about the ones we can get from dogs and cats. Out of all human infectious diseases, 61% of them are zoonotic, and with the newly emerging infectious diseases that are out there, 75% of those are zoonotic, so this is a big issue right now. And the other concern that we have with this is more and more of the people, our community, are immunocompromised. We have more people on chemotherapy. We have more HIV AIDS patients. And then just the population in general getting older. And then the other category would be young kids also. There again, their immune systems aren't as mature and make it easier to contract such diseases. So examples of some of these diseases can be roundworms and hookworms. We primarily see this more as a problem in children who are out and kind of aren't as good with their hygiene about washing their hands. But with roundworms and hookworms, those can be passed to the species of dogs or cats. And if the kids um, are out playing in the sandbox or out in the dirt and get some of these eggs on their fingers and then go to eat or their snack or whatever before they wash, they can ingest these eggs. And we can have problems with the eye. We can have problems with other organs in the body. And also with hookworms, if we walk across these in bare feet in areas where hookworms are problems, we can get something called cutaneous larval migraines where these hookworms migrate through our skin and cause some problems also. So another parasite we worry about is something called Giardia, and that also passes through the stool of, of cats and dogs, and people can get this also. The good news is not every strain of Giardia people can get, but the problem is we have no good testing to define which one our dogs and cats are passing, so we have to potentially treat every pet that we diagnose with this as a candidate for passing that on to their owners. So there again, good hygiene, washing hands before you eat, um, promptly disposing of the stool and the fecal waste is a good way to prevent that. Another parasite that you could possibly contract from your pet is something called cryptosporidium. And there again, that's a, a parasite that's spread through the feces. So once again, proper hygiene, picking up, um, getting rid of fecal waste as soon as possible, and then washing your hands before that. Um, and also another thing, this ringworm. And so your pets can transmit ringworm to you also and you can transmit it back. We've seen that happen also where maybe someone else brings in ringworm and then the pet picks it up from them. So ringworm is another one of these things. So if you're noticing crusty areas, scaly areas, areas of a little bit of hair loss on your dog or cat, ringworm is one thing that we should think about. It doesn't have that classic appearance like it does on people where we kind of get that red ring. It can look totally different in dogs and cats. So anything, if you suspect it could be ringworm, bring it in and there's some easy tests that can be done to diagnose that. Another skin parasite that potentially we can get from our pets, specifically from our dogs, is something called sarcoptic mange or scabies. And with that, usually your dogs are pretty itchy. And the owners tend to get rashes on their arms or on their chest, areas where they hug their dogs a lot. Sometimes we have the owner's doctors send them into us to diagnose the dogs with it because they found it on, on the owner. And then other times the dog comes in itching and we'll kind of ask the owners if they've had any rashes and they may say, well, yes, we do. And so we'll send them to their doctor to further confirm it. But that's another thing. So then again, if your dog is itching, you're not sure why, or people in your family have rashes, you can't explain. That's one thing to think about. A couple of final diseases that we can get from our pets. One is leptospirosis. That's a disease that's spread through contaminated urine. And so it's usually our wildlife, rats, raccoons, possums, deer that are spreading that and then they infect our dogs. So it is a potential if your dog has leptospirosis for you to get that from your dog um, through the urine if it contacts like cuts or your mucous membranes. So if your veterinarian is suspecting leptospirosis, we do need to be careful on how you handle your dog. The other and lastly is rabies. The good news in the United States, dog rabies, that strain of rabies has been wiped out. That does not mean your dogs can't get rabies. They can get other strains. They can get it from bats. They can get it from raccoons. So there are different strains. But because of the vaccination protocols we have in the United States, some of these strains are being eradicated. But we still have rabies in the United States, and that means you definitely need to keep your animals vaccinated. So in all, there's a lot of things we can get. That does not mean we shouldn't have pets. There's many more benefits for pets than there are cons. But there again, taking them to your veterinarian once or twice a year for yearly health checks. More frequently, if you think there's problems going on, to try to catch these before they can transfer to you and become a problem.